Go ahead, tell me what's wrong with the world today. Yeah, you got lots of answers. What's wrong with the world today? Let's see. Food distribution, education distribution, wealth distribution. Um, dumb people making decisions that affect everybody. Hate, not enough love, not enough respect. We devalue each other. Yeah, these are bad things. These are bad things and they keep, keep happening. They don't quit. So, what's the Christian attitude to wear this? Because is the, the bad thing is that we Christians uh, have a, a reputation for sticking up for the status quo. Uh, sticking up for the way things have been always because I don't know we're we're privileged people why why do we want to stick up for the status quo so much let's not how about that how about instead we stick up for God and what God values and what God wants and and go there that'd be different let's try it you might like it so Turn the world upside down. What would it take? Maybe first I gotta understand the problem. I've been talking, you know, I talked last week about education and, and some other areas, you know. Uh, there's a need for criminal justice reform, there's a need for uh, tort reform, there's a need for reform, reform, reform. There's everything. The people who are looking out relentlessly and endlessly for their own interest, have been doing so always, and they are not gonna quit. And so if we are actually interested in making the world better, we actually have to sort of take them on face to face, don't we? We actually have to get in the faces of people and start doing the opposite of what they're doing. Not doing the same, you know, not just learning how to work within the system to get what we want, not just learning to put ourselves at the top. The rats keep winning the rat race, it's always going to happen. But our job, I believe, as Christians, is to turn it upside down. And so just think about that pyramid, the human pyramid, people on the bottom, all oh, you know, the majority. The majority, the majority, the most, the many, the few, the one on the top. How do you think that person on the top got there? I expect that part of the story is not just merit. We do not seem to have a history in this country of electing people on the basis of merit. We don't do it. We be, we'll like people on the basis of charisma, attractiveness to us. We've got other things. But what about that person at the top and how they got there and how we can change the system? Because the person on the top has trod on other people, has made other people Hurt. You know, for every person who is wealthy, there's somebody else who's less wealthy. And and I know anyone with the, the least understanding of economics knows it's not quite that simple. The money is not a zero-sum game and, and so forth. But, yeah, what about it? How can we turn it upside down? How can we change it? Specifically, how can I go ahead and include the people who have been excluded systematically for so long? How can I do that? Uh, a famous biblical character named Paul did that. He went to a town called Thessalonica. This is in Acts chapter 17. Went to a town named Thessalonica, stayed there for a few weeks, got in arguments, uh, you know, talking religion week after week with people 
and gained a lot of people who agreed with him. And what he was saying was, Jesus is the Messiah. That was the heart of his message. Jesus is the one who comes to change the world to make it all just. That's what Messiah means. So, what was different about Paul? Because every Jew wanted there to be a Messiah, but they didn't want Jesus to be the Messiah. Why didn't they want Jesus? You know, why does only some people want Jesus to be Messiah? I understand that all the early Christians were Jews, or earliest Christians were Jews, and then it sort of spread a little bit after this uh, towards some other folks as well. But what? What, what, what could make this all turn upside down? What could change? What really ticked people off about Paul? How was he turning it upside down with words, with arguing that Jesus was the Messiah? Well, the thing with Jesus being the Messiah is that Jesus specifically buys into a very old idea from the prophets Isaiah and Jeremiah. And what's that radical idea that people didn't like? That idea is everyone should be included. Everyone should be included. Everybody should be welcomed to worship at the temple. Everybody should be welcomed to a full inheritance of the grace of God. Whatever that means. Everyone's included. If they want to worship God, if they want to live lives of justice, then God loves them just as much as God loves you. You don't get to claim anything special for being, you know, what you are, for being born the way you were born. We're all special. And so what happened was that people who had been left out started following Paul. I want to, you know, so to be specific, people who are not Jewish and women followed Paul. Why? Because they were not on top in the previous system. That was not, you know, their world. They had been excluded, 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 cut out, left out, you know? And it kept happening. Until Paul comes along and says, you know, if Jesus is the Messiah, here's the justice Jesus brings. Jesus brings a justice where you are fully included. Amazing. Darn near impossible to conceive. He's including you. You who are at the bottom. And what's the equivalent today? Maybe still women who are still getting paid less than men. Uh, still people of color who are still paid less than or white people, um, gay people who are uh, still in most places, including most states, or many states, able to lose their job because of their sexuality, subject to prejudice, subject to hate, subject to judgment. Yeah. How about including all of those people in God's grace and saying that you matter as much to God as, you know, white male. That's the modern equivalent. It says in the, in, the, in the Bible that the Jews got upset. What it really means is the people in charge of the synagogue, not all the Jews, all the Jews were still thinking about it, thinking, this Paul guy, he's kind of crazy. But interesting idea, I kind of like it. But the people who had the most to lose were the people at the top, the person at the top of the pyramid is the person who has the furthest to fall. And they know, they know that the people beneath them are really eager to knock them off. Knock them down to where they don't want to belong. The Christian message is really a message from the get-go, from the first generation, from Paul, from Jesus of including, of honoring all different kinds of people. It really is originally a message that includes and doesn't exclude. 
that brings mercy, not judgment, that brings love, not hate and division. But some of us can't stand it. We want our religion, we want our politics, we want everything to be about division, about somebody being superior, preferably me. Right? We want to be on top of the heap. And so Paul's friends get arrested, they get dragged off, you know, they got to, people start a riot and hire tough guys to, you know, elbow people and beat up people in a riot to start trouble because people do that. Christians get busy demonstrating and pissed. Christians get busy saying everyone should be included and Christians get busy saying all lives of black people matter. All lives of excluded people matter. Lives of women matter. Lives of the oppressed matter. And God is desperately interested in all of the oppressed lives. Ah, well then people get upset. And they start saying, oh, these people have bad politics, bad religion. We disagree with them. They undermine us. They take away our place on top. It's weird to talk about these things as a white man, a man raised in privilege, still possessed of privilege. I am the elite. So it's weird to talk about the fact that God really wants to include everybody else. If God figures I'll get along, I'm fine. As long as I have heart surgeon now and then help me out, I'm fine. But God wants to make sure we're including everybody. And to do that, the way to get there is unfortunately to do exactly what Paul and his friends were accused of. Turn the world upside down. That's what it takes. The people on the bottom of the heap need their turn at the top of the heap. At least need their turn in the middle of the heap. And, you know, if it's indeed a heap. They need their seat at the table. They need their voice to be heard. They need to be loved. They need to matter. And it's up to people like me to give it. To give them voice. To give them time at the mic. To give love. To give full inclusion. To give mercy. To give away leadership, to give away superiority, to give away value, prestige. Join me. Let's try it together. Let's walk this path together. Let's see what good things God has in mind if we start turning the world upside down. God bless you.